Do we really have to choose him to be our next spokesperson? He's so boring. Hmm. Sounds like you're on the fence. Why don't I just leave you my resume? <laughs> yes, it's laminated. No thanks. Tired. Try caramel M and M's. Ow. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the U.S. Women's National Team. We're live from SDCCU Stadium in San Diego, California, where through 45 minutes of play, the United States leads Denmark 2-1 to on goals from Alex Morgan and Julie Ertz. Look, here at ESPN, we like to take things very seriously, most of the time. Every once in a while, we let our hair down and we go surfing, or should I say, Julie Foudy goes surfing with Mallory Pugh. Enjoy. So Mal, I heard a rumor that you wanted to learn how to surf. Yes. You ask, we deliver, sister. We have surfboards, full on wetsuit for you. And four time world champion pro surfer, Lisa Anderson. Huh? Sweating. We look like we're legit. After conquering surfing, Mal and I talked about how she's making waves in pro soccer and the U.S. national team. You popped in and were so calm, so confident. <laughs> And I remember thinking, hey, that took me like 10 years to do. <laughs> Mallory Pugh with the goal. This youngster, she cannot be stopped. All the nerves go away when I get my first touch in a game. I don't really overthink it. I'm like, it's just another soccer game. Just going out, doing what I've been doing since I was three. What was the biggest difference of playing at the highest level? The speed of play. Speed of play? Yeah. It's like 100 miles an hour and then just how how everyone is so sophisticated with the game. Just having a good soccer brain. What do the old gals teach you? I think just how to handle things in a professional way. And, and then also, I think just the competitive side of it. Even in training, you have to bring that competitive edge. All right, what are you teaching them? Some of the younger lingo. I need it. Um, so like, there's this new word called FI. It's F-Y-E. What do you think it stands for? Fat, awesome. <laughs> like fire. <laughs> so like I'll bring that to them and failed. In your opinion, what does this team need to improve upon? I think we need to just find our like identity. What do you hope the identity is of the team? That we're awesome. <laughs> that is my favorite answer. <laughs> that we're we're what was it? Bye. Yes, Thank you. that we're fine. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. I thought you were gonna be like, I want to be this like attacking team. <laughs> no, that we're awesome. That we're awesome. Is there anything else we can cross off your bucket list while we're at it? You can help me try and win a World Cup. Boom! <laughs> Surfing will definitely help that. All right, see you later, Jules. We're never gonna see her again. And, of course, you can log on to ESPNW.com for the most extensive, in-depth coverage and stories surrounding women's sports, including our guy Graham Hayes has a great read on Alex Morgan's journey back to the top after a slow start to 2017. The aforementioned article from Julie on women's soccer players across the world finding their voice in the fight for equal treatment. And outside the soccer world, Lindsey Vaughn amps up for the Olympics with a World Cup downhill win. 45 minutes down, 45 to go. The U.S. leads Denmark 2-1. First half highlights when we return.
from San Diego, California, the United States women lead Denmark 2-1 to one in their first match of 2018. Great to have you back with us here on ESPN. Julie Foudy, Sebastian Salazar. All right, so we've got it in the books. The first 45 minutes of the year. What would you think? I, I thought it was a great response by the United States because they started off strong. They go down. We've seen so many situations where that's not the case, but they respond as they did. And that high pressure is paying off, as we saw with the goal. Let's check out the first half highlights. Actually got off to a terrible start for the United States. 14th minute, Nadia Nadim crashing in, and she makes it 1-0 Denmark. And look at all that traffic, but she still rises above, put that one on frame. And this is Peterson cannot give this ball, the goalkeeper for the Danish team, because Pugh is there, wisely sniffs that one up, a great ball in to Alex Morgan. And here's the goal that impresses so much. Look at Julia Ertz separating from the crowd. She does a little loop around him. And then Tierna Davidson just trying to get something on frame. And Ertz there to redirect it so nicely. What a great finish by Julia Ertz. We talked about two players in the open, Morgan and Ertz, and they both scored. Here's a look at your first you, half ladies. stats. The possession there tells one story. I think the shots really tells a true story of this match. The United States dominant through the first 45 minutes. Quick break. When we return, second half kickoff. Can Julie Ertz keep the good times rolling? We'll find out in just a moment. No one knows where it comes from. Why some have it and some don't. It's the fighting spirit. It consumes fear and weakness. It stands ready to fight whatever shape the battle takes. Because as long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. One, as we get set to start the second half, we'll be found you, Sebastian Salazar, along with you. You're looking on the bench at Julie Ertz having that left big toe worked on. We're getting reports from Barra that it's actually been quite a great last couple hours for the Ertz family. <laughs> Her husband, Zach, playing in the NFC Championship game for the Philadelphia Eagles against the Minnesota Vikings. Eagles apparently leading big in the third quarter, and Zach has had five catches on the day. Ertz racing back onto the field as we get set to start the second half. A change here for the Danes. Entering the match will be midfielder Nana Christiansen. She'll replace Maya Kildemos in the center of the park. Nadia Nadim stands over the ball for Denmark. She'll put it in play. Nadim, the lone goal scorer for the Danes in the first half. Her strike coming in the 14th minute. There was a quick and thorough response from the Americans. Goals in the 17th and 19th, Alex Morgan and Julie Ertz, respectively. Reza Nielsen tried to slip it through for Harder. Jonah Davidson stepping in. Ertz loses the ball, but wins it right back. Crunching challenge on Nadim. Yeah, young Pedersen spraying it wide. Nielsen now with a chance to cross. She'll drive it across the box, but Lindsay Horan touches it to Rapino. Christensen crashing through. Ball finally falls to the feet of Kelly O'Hara. She'll relieve the pressure. With a long ball to the feet of Yanni Arm. No substitutes for the United States at the half. One on one. Fire! <laughs> Mallory Pugh. How about that for a start to the second half? I got one word for you, Sebastian. That was fire. In the purest sense of the word. Look at this. Faces up. And then just says, I'm going to just take this one top corner. Thank you very much. A little bit of a gap. Oh, my goodness. Arth just can't keep up pace-wise, and Pew knows it. Why not? What a nice finish by Pew. And what a
what a great way for the United States to get that half started because really they finished that first half giving Denmark a bit of confidence with Rapino missing that breakaway against Peterson. If you were watching at halftime, you know what not five is. <laughs> That's and mean. now you have visual proof. Very not five. And evidence of what five <laughs> truly can be from the foot of Mallory Pugh. Morgan locked in a battle there. She'll lose out. Denmark ball. Harder and Nadine give and go. Harder trying to poke it wide. But the passing lanes are not there for this Denmark team. Davidson, cool, calm, collected. Outside the foot, touch of that left foot. Haran, nice flick ahead to Morgan. Morgan, left footed cross, just missed Andy Sullivan. It'll fall to Taylor Smith. She lobs it back in. Clumsy clearance from the Danes. Haran on it. She'll drop it to Ertz. Save. Stina, Lika, Peterson. Story of the first half, American pressure, and it has been the story so far here in the second. Another turnover from the Danes. Morgan slips it ahead. Sullivan back across. Rapino the touch. Skipped away. Haran, awkward touch, cleared by Larson. Smith and Harder in a foot race. Denmark's number 10 wins out. But they can't keep possession. Pew, across, shot deflected. And Peterson. Look at Pew, here she is on the left side of your screen. And she's just poaching there waiting, as she has been knowing that the Denmark has given up so much possession in that back third. And what a finish that is. But again, it's the pressure of the United States front three that is causing so much chaos for Denmark. Harder. Ahead to Dolgerson. Teresa Nielsen. Kelly O'Hara. In a duel there, last touched by the American left back. Ball into the area. Carter turns right into the physical presence of Julie Ertz. Good double team here from Morgan and Rapino. Rapino bombs it ahead. Three to one, United States. Morgan, Ertz. Pew, your goal scores. Ertz slamming that ball forward. Sullivan will track it down. Sullivan, Pew, Smith triangulating on the far side. Ball works its way to Julie Ertz. Loses it only to win it right back. Ertz now, one on one. Ertz drawing a double team on the far side. She slipped it to Smith. Smith atop the box. Challenge from behind from Harder. Play on, says the referee. Mallory Pugh wins it right back. I know our possession stats at halftime said 51-49, but it does not feel like that. As nearly every time Denmark wins the ball, they give it right back. Update. From down in Trinidad, the United States under 20 women's team in World Cup qualifying has just finished up against Jamaica, their second group phase match. They won the first one against Nicaragua and have beaten the Jamaicans 
two to one. Big win, big win for the U.S. there. Sophie Smith, Jalen Howell, the goal scores. We should know. Tierna Davidson will join that team after she's finished here with the senior national team. I also probably should note, but don't really want to, that that tournament is being played at Otto Bolden Stadium. Yes, the Otto Bolden Stadium. 10-10, 2017 in Uva Trinidad. And there's a look at Carly Lloyd. Looks like she's about to come in. And Denmark still, Sebastian, trying to play out of the back. Hey, you got to respect it. <laughs> I mean, that's persistence right there. Oh, and it's just not working out well. And, and the U.S. knows it. They're sitting, they're pushing. How far back Nadim has dropped just to get a whiff of the ball. The pressure continuing from the United States, despite the fact that they've opened up a two-goal lead. like Emily Sonnet, Carly Lloyd set to check in. Bring the two substitutions will be Addy Dahlkemper and Taylor Smith. We'll await final word on that from the fourth official. Julie, it's one of the big questions looming for Jill Ellis and this U.S. team. What will Carly Lloyd's role be? Yeah, and it's a big one because obviously we've seen what she does in big games, in big moments. I mean, you can argue one of the best that has ever played in a U.S. jersey, jersey in big moments, big goals. Um, and yet, as she approaches the latter half of the 30s, and, and, and Jill Ellis knows that 90 minutes is probably not realistic, is, is how do you balance that? How many minutes are you going to get out of Carly? Will she be okay with not being a starter? But this is what you know about Carly Lloyd. She's a fighter, boy. And when her back is pressed against the wall or she's told she's not going to be a starter or she's too old or whatever other... Are you suggesting Carly has a chip on her? <laughs> then she will fight and say, okay. i got something to show you then. And it's what I've always loved most about her is that never, ever puts her down. She's, she's ready to roll. Yeah, bet against Carly Lloyd at your own risk. I'm not going to be the first to do it. Lloyd sitting on 98 goals, two away from the century mark. This her 247th international appearance for the U.S. Tolgerson now squaring up against the American defense. Cut it back for Trolls guard from distance. Pulls it wide. Uh, Andy Sullivan, who has dealt with her own injuries over the last 18 months, down on the ground. As we mentioned, top overall draft pick in the recent NWSL draft for the Washington Spirit. to her shoulder right away. First, you know, everyone that goes through their minds is, oh no, not, a, yeah. not the ACL again. So that's, I think, at least an encouraging sign. It's not for me. What a remarkable recovery she made I mean, to get back to this level this quickly. There's a lot about her attitude, but also her natural ability. So the U.S. reduced to 10 as the medical staff continues to work on Sullivan on the far sideline. O'Hara all the way back to Alyssa Nair. Even a quiet evening for Nair. I thought Denmark might test her a little bit more, but outside of that 14th minute goal from Nadine, it's been pretty comfortable for the American keeper. Long ball into Morgan. She does well to flick it on. But no target there. 
Dean Larson, pressured by Rapino. Larson launches it forward. O'Hara wins, does a nice job to keep possession with Lindsey Horan. Sullivan back on the field. Lloyd's first touch of the game. Connected pass to Mallory Pugh. Moran, nice pass for O'Hara. Ahead to Morgan, beautiful stuff here from the United States. Rapino stopped, started, unsure if she was offside. Finally, the flag does go up. Nice movement, though, by the United States. Off the ball, the rhythm is good. She's a good three yards off there, but... The movement's been good offensively, but that's been spurred on because they've been so good defensively. As you just mentioned, Sebastian, every time the U.S. loses possession, they are on it with two, three, sometimes even four players surrounding the ball, winning the ball back in Denmark's defensive third. You may correct me here, but it reminds me so much of one of those legendary Barcelona teams in their peak. Everyone wanted to talk about the attacking play, but it was their pressure off the ball that really allowed them to dominate possession. And that's what we've seen here today. Denmark just can't connect two or three passes together. Oh, and they... And this is a good Denmark team. Harder ahead to Trolls guard there, but she eventually loses out. Sullivan still kind of gingerly holding that shoulder when she runs. But she did just signal over to Jill Ellis that she's okay to stay in. But when she's running, that left arm is tight to her side. Christensen. Looking for Nadine. Three, four American players surround the Danish forward. And the U.S. comes away with it. With Carly Lloyd coming on. Looks like she's dropped into a actually rather deep midfield role. And Julie Ertz is back to that center back spot. Sullivan now operating as Ertz was in the first half, dropping deep between the center backs. Look at Davidson go. Roaring forward, she finds Rapino. Pino, one on two. Finds Hare and tries to get it back to Rapino. Well dissected there by the Danes. Thursday, March 1st, ESPN2 is your home for the United States' first match of the She Believes Cup. They'll take on Germany, Matt Free Stadium in Columbus, Ohio. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Also catch the match streaming live on the ESPN app. Emily Sonnet. Play both center and right back, operating out of the right back spot for now. All the way up field, applying that pressure. We mentioned the She Believes Cup coming up. Boy, that's a stacked tournament. Germany, France, England, back to back. Jill Ellis wants to see her team tested. Gonna get it right there. Yeah, when asked, you know, what she wants the schedule to be, she said hard and harder. There you have it. But that's what, that's what you should be playing. I mean, that was the test of 2017. They don't end up faring well against it, but what it does is it causes you to pause and reflect and tinker and fix and, and get better. And if there's one thing the She Believes Cup taught us last year, the back three wasn't going to work. <laughs> right. Not to say it might not get used at some time, certainly late in the match, but I, I remember very vividly the game against France in Washington, a 3 nothing result, and you just never see the U.S. kind of played off the field as they were in, in that game. All right, set piece coming here. 62nd minute, U.S. on top, 3-1 to one, over Denmark. 
Rapino stands over the ball. She's got five targets in or around the box. We'll make it six with Andy Sullivan creeping. Sonic did well to step into that. Didn't quite get her shot off. And the rebound falls to Peterson. Peterson bombing it forward, but Davidson there. Sullivan mistimes the header. Ertz will go all the way back to Nair. Sullivan stepping into space. Space that for now, the Danes will give her. Davidson under some pressure. Skirted out quickly to O'Hara. Ball rolls off the field. Denmark with an opportunity here. Teresa Nielsen. Christensen. Denmark building some possession. They cross into the final third now. Nielsen. Ball across the box. Touchdown by Nadim. Nair races out to cover it. U.S. goals coming in the 17th minute, courtesy of Alex Morgan. The 19th minute, courtesy of Julie Ertz. And then, really within 90 seconds of the start of the second half, Mallory Pugh had made it 3-1. Denmark actually opening the scoring in this match, 14 minutes in. The Portland Thorns legend, Nadia Nadim. Larson in an uncomfortable spot. Picks out Pedersen, who ends up going all the way back. And now another turnover from Denmark. Pew! Pew! More five! This young lady cannot be stopped. And it's Peterson again, who just with her feet wants to play it to Mallory Pugh. Unbelievable again, as Pugh's just right there. Thank you for this gift. And Peterson knows it. You can see her reaction afterwards. Oh dear, I gotta cover my goal. And then, to then be beat near post on top of it, to double the insult. You can see the anger in her, but that is just way too sloppy from Denmark to think that they're going to be able to get away with it. There's too many lapses in the back line tonight from a team that's much better than this. And that is something that Lars Sundergaard, the new coach, is going to have to deal with, certainly. More pressure here from the U.S. Denmark works their way out of it this time. Pew two goals in the opening 20 minutes of the second half has extended the U.S. lead four to one. Harder turns, looking for Nadim. O'Hara the touch, swept away by Sullivan. Rapino looking for Morgan, Morgan in behind, just misses a touch! And it'll roll harmlessly wide. What a beauty of a ball by Rapino because Morgan knows I've got them for pace. This back line for Denmark has struggled with the pace and all she needs to do is get a little bit of a touch on there. She goes with her left foot there. Maybe it was something she should have gone with her right foot just to redirect it. But the back line for Denmark really struggling for pace there. So much to exploit. Sixty-seven minutes down, the U.S. in control of this match. Four to one and looking to make it more. Sullivan the turnover. Dalgerson from about 20 yards. Runs out of options. Now goes one-on-one -on -one at Kelly O'Hara. Not going to beat her for pace. 
O'Hara knocks it out of bounds for a corner kick. <laughs> you got to love the fire of Kelly O'Hara. Every time you see her, she's talking, she's directing, she's so intense. And she's not afraid to get into anybody. I mean, she uh, got into Megan Rapino in the first half for oh, not yeah. cutting out a through ball. All right, here comes the 68th minute corner kick from Denmark. This was how they scored their opening goal in the 14th minute. Ball driven to the spot, but Lindsey Horan there to head it away. We've got a line change coming for the U.S. Four subs ready to enter the game. But we may have more damage on the scoreboard here first. Pugh rolls it back to Horan. Rapino tried to pick out Horan in the middle of the park. But her pass just off target. Togerson, nice turn. But Megan Rapino is there to win it back for the U.S. How many times have we said that tonight? Listen, Air enjoying a rare touch on the ball. Kristen Press, Lynn Williams, Crystal Dunn, and Savannah McCaskill all set to check into this match. Trolls guard to the area. Ertz, what a play. She can do it all. Put the ball in the net at one end, keep it out of the net at the other. Here come our subs. Kristen Press will be the first of the four to enter the match. She'll replace Alex Morgan. Morgan's goal, the equalizer in the 17th minute. And she'll lead to a raucous applause from this San Diego crowd. Press onto the field, just traded to the Houston Dash from the Chicago Red Stars. This her 97th appearance. Crystal Dunn replaces Megan Rapino, while Lynn Williams replaces Mallory Pugh. And a little bit of history here. Savannah McCaskill set to earn her first ever senior international appearance. She'll do so in relief of Andy Sullivan. Entering the game, number Sullivan, the number one pick in the recent NWSL draft. McCaskill, number two to number the Boston Breakers. Had a great career at the University of South Carolina, McCaskill. Number 12, Lynn Williams. You always knew she had something more to give. And to see her wearing a U.S. jersey is tremendous because this is a player that's so smart on the ball as well. Feisty and she'll buzz around and she's always getting in the mix of things, but she she's great in that. And I like that they're playing her in the midfield. She played mostly up high at University of South Carolina, but she's so good tactically at breaking down defenses. It'll be interesting to see her with a team full of, of stars around her. McCaskill, just 21 years old, combined for 17 goals and assists her senior season at South Carolina. Trolls guard and Vi win a two on one with Lynn Williams. Williams, perhaps one of the best examples of the value the National Women's Soccer League has had for this U.S. program. Absolutely, because she gets another look and she has another life. Sonnet, the universal symbol there for all ball. Center F Karen App disagrees. It'll be a dangerous set piece here potentially for Denmark. The harder not 
afraid to take these from distance. She can strike a beautiful ball and has done it very well over the years for Denmark. Williams and Kristen Press will make the two-player wall here for the United States. U.S. playing a high line. They're set up just beyond the edge of the penalty area. Harder delivers. And it will skip harmlessly through the area. Well, it's been a tough night for Denmark. Their lone goal, however, coming from Nadia Nadim. Maybe the best story in all of sports. She was born in Afghanistan. Tragedy strikes in 2000. The Taliban killed her father. Family forced to flee the country. In 2009, she makes her debut for Denmark's senior national team. In 2014, she joins Sky Blue of the NWSL. Two years later, she joins the Portland Thorns. And then, earlier this year, crossing back over to the old continent to play for Manchester City. I mean, it's just remarkable. Nine different languages she speaks. She's finishing medical school. Trolls guard in behind here. Ertz clipped her. And the incredulous Julie Ertz will go in the book in the 74th minute. Gets her accidentally, but I think that's a good call. Right, right there. Finally a sign of life from I the Danes. I was going to say, but at least a bit of life. We'll finish the thought real quick on Nadia Nadim. She's studying to become a surgeon, a plastic surgeon. She said not so much cosmetic, but reconstructive surgeries. Just such a remarkable human being. Katrina Vai, Pernilla Harder, standing over the ball. Harder will deliver! Nair saved by the crossbar. Nair having a strong game. I think she gets a little bit of a touch on here. We'll see if they call it a corner kick. Nope, she doesn't, and it's a goal kick. Just off the top of that bar, but in, in the moment she's been called on, and she had that one covered, she's made a few big saves tonight. And I think that's one of the things that Ellis has been looking at when you're not having a busy games and Nair's been known to drop a few, maybe let one in as we saw that happen in the Brazil game over last summer. And it's been a solid performance for not having a busy night. Substitution for Denmark, Sofia Young Pedersen leads the match. She's replaced by Nicolina Sorensen. USA up 4 to 1, 76th minute here in San Diego, California. First match of the 2018 calendar year for Jill Ellis and company. The, the craziest part, as I, as I think about that Nadia Nadim story, the craziest part of that is the family was actually trying to get from Italy smuggled to England because they had relatives there. And so they were in the back of a truck, dark, don't know where they are and they get dropped in a rural land in the middle of the night, and they go, this doesn't look like England. There's no lights. They said, at dawn, there's a man walking his dog, and they said, and now this is Nadia with her four other sisters and her mother, because the father's been executed. They said, where are we? And they said, you're in Denmark. Crystal Dunn looking for the cross, deflected out of bounds, corner kick upcoming. They went on to become refugees, of course, there, and now, She's a star for the Danish national team. What a story. Scored a goal in the championship of the European final. That 4-2 defeat to the Netherlands. Actually scored the opener just about six minutes in to put Denmark on top. McCaskill delivers the corner. Well struck ball. Cleared out to press. She'll knock it down for Kelly O'Hara, all the way back to Julie Ertz. <laughs> the 
West will try this left flank again. Caspel finding a pocket. Under some pressure, sends it back to Nair. Nair, 29 years old, making her 24th international appearance, the 2014 NWSL Goalie of the Year. Goes for the Chicago Red Stars. See the frustration from Nadim. Sonnet pushing into the final third. Now Crystal Dunn. Dunn, the left footed cross. Can press be first to it? Yes, she can. Keeps it in before Larson knocks it out of bounds for a U.S. throw. Charging through the box. Another corner kick up coming from the U.S. It'll look like Savannah McCaskill to put this in play. U.S. not nearly sending as many numbers forward. Five players in the box. But the only one you need to worry about if you're Denmark, Julie Ertz. And she's roaming free. Ball driven in, punched away to press. Denmark able to clear the lines, but not able to maintain possession. McCaskill, Lloyd, Williams. U.S. pinging the ball around at will. They'll go wide now to Kelly O'Hara. O'Hara, one on one. Can she get to the end line? Left footed cross. Press. Lurking. Kelly O'Hara just has the stop tonight. Gets a little bit of a gap and says, why not? I'm going in there, serving it with pace across, knowing something's going to happen. And Press trying to make that near post run. Almost gets on the end of it. U.S. Soccer posted a video earlier this week of the infamous beat test. Kelly O'Hara, stage 57. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Ball headed in, cleared off the line. No sign from the referee or the linesman. No goal. We got to get another look at that. I think Peterson was as surprised as anyone to find it in her hands there. And the offside flag is up. But Carly Lloyd wants the refs to take another look at it. Oof, she's standing over the line and it goes all the way up and over. It's a yep. goal, ladies and gentlemen. You see a little bit of green there between the posts. Yeah. That's definitely all the way over the line, especially, especially because is standing inside the goal. It sounds crazy to say this of a player with 98 career international goals, but if there's somebody who needed a goal right now, it may well be Carly Lloyd. Williams across, press, shot, save, but tucked in. Crystal Dunn makes it five to one. This is another case of the U.S. just showing the depth, too. Right? You have Press with that first very good look. And Dunn is just going to be a bit more eager than Denmark. Denmark getting outclassed in so many different areas tonight. Way too casual there. But again, give credit to the United States. In every situation like this, the United States has been the one that's pouncing. And done there to pounce on the end of that one. 
but it really shows you the separation between and and, and mind you Denmark had a great run yeah. over the European Championships this summer to take nothing away from that but it does show you the separation with some of these European squads trying to break in and how the United States the depth of the United States the pace of the United States I mean on all levels the goalkeeping has just been so much better tonight on the with all the women in red an impressive performance for the United States 5-1 up on the Denmark side entered today ranked 12th in the world They've done it with a 19-year-old at the heart of the defense, Tierna Davidson. Lloyd now. Another beautiful ball from the American number 10. Lynn Williams cross looking for press. I mean, here's another good sign. You talk about Tierna Davidson. Two goals from another 19-year-old. Mallory Pugh and McCaskill getting her first cap at 21 tonight as well. So you have two players getting their first international cap in what we said would not be a year of tinkering. <laughs> Why don't but you I focus do on the things we got right? <laughs> but I do think, I mean, y you're always going to be looking as a coach. Of yeah. course you are. And if you ever stop looking, is the day you get fired, right? So I, I think that's going to be the case where you're going to see situations and especially coming up off just off such strong collegiate seasons as Davidson and McCaskill had you had to see them get a look I think it's great to see they're able then to convert that into a 18 and getting on the roster as we've seen so many college kids not be able to do but I definitely think as 18 starts to unfold this will be a year where as we said from the top Ellis is trying to lock in on that that 11 plus one player aligned. And the great news for her is she's got a lot of young players to look at right now. Milet Jens checking in for Denmark. To be fair, none of these players are totally new to this program. They've all been in camp, senior national team. Obviously, Andy Sullivan had already been capped before tonight. Jill Ellis over the last 12 to 16 months has had a great opportunity to look at all three of those players. And you know, they were the players that we wanted to talk to her about yesterday. And she was, I, would, I was really impressed by how open she was in, in praising how good they'd been in camp. Harder, left footed shot. Sails over the bar. Mrs. Fye herself. Look at this second goal. What a beauty this is. Picks it up. And says, I'm just going to put it in the upper corner. And the pace she showed and the discipline on defense as well she was constantly causing problems for Denmark's back line they just couldn't build out of the back with Pew putting that pressure on wow what a list most goals by a teenager in US soccer history that is rarefied air right there Denmark pushing forward, hoping to perhaps turn the tables on the American pressure. Last touch though by the Danes will be a U.S. throw. Hey, 
Press playing with her back to goal. Another throw in for the U.S. Take this chance to remind you, Sunday, March 4th, tune into ESPN for a soccer double header. First at noon Eastern on ESPN 2. The United States hosts France from Red Bull Arena in the She Believes Cup. Then 5 Eastern, MLS Soccer Sunday on ESPN, presented by Audi. The Seattle Sounders hosting expansion side LAFC in the MLS season opener on ESPN. Coverage begins 12 Eastern on ESPN2. Both matches streaming live on the ESPN app. And I also go back to Denmark actually scored the first goal of this game, right? And the reaction from the United States, it's something that you want to see right away. How are they going to react? Mind you, it's not a hostile environment here in San Diego. They're playing at home. But still, it's the first game of the year. A lot of pressure to start well since 17 didn't start well. And the U.S. responded and responded again and again. Another positive to take from this match. U.S. 16, 5, and 3 all time against Denmark. Closing in on win number 17. Nielsen, harder, looking for a through ball, cut out expertly by Kelly O'Hara. She'll launch the counterattack through Kristen Press. Beautiful switch, it's on for Lynn Williams. Williams, one-on-one -on -one with Katrina Vai. She'll go for the early cross. Lindsay Horan crashing into the box, unable to get to it first. Ninth minute, Denmark. Looking for a second goal on the night. Able to pierce the American defense. a battle no matter the score line. Harder showing off her footwork. Press now in a foot race. Bad spot to be if you're a defender. Williams. Williams tries to clip it past Arn. Coming up after our show, a very special edition of Sports Center. It's moments away here on ESPN. Ninetieth minute, U.S. on top, five to one. Goals from Morgan, Hertz, Dunn, and two from Mallory Pugh. <laughs> Two minutes of stoppage time. All that's left here in San Diego. I think there's lots to be pleased if the United States thinking, okay, good way to start 2018 for sure. And lots to build on going into their next big tournament that she believes in March. And if you're Denmark, you're going home going, hey, we got some work to do here. Especially out of building out of the back, my goodness. Ertz to Nair. Nair really in a bigger part of this game with her feet and with her hands. This Denmark team that played such attacking, brash soccer during the European Championships has been stymied tonight. U.S. content to maintain possession here for the final seconds. Yeah, we're under some pressure. Clears it to Crystal Dawn. Sonic looking for Carly Lloyd, but it's intercepted by Trolls guard. Lindsay Horan now going along over the top. Peterson races out 
to gather. Is there one last push in this Danish side? Just about 30 seconds left. Harder, quiet most of the evening. Tries a two-player game with Nadia Nadim, but the numbers, as they have been all night, in favor of the U.S. Williams cross, cleared away. Crystal Dunn will get a crack at it. No, she won't. The crowd reaction, all you need to know as the U.S. puts up a five spot on Denmark in the opening game of 2018. Once again, five to one, we'll be back from San Diego in just a moment to wrap things up as the U.S. gets 2018 off to a rockin' start. Welcome back to San Diego, the U.S. 5-1 winners over Denmark. Up next for the U.S., first on Thursday, March 1st, the first to the She Believes Cup against Germany in Columbus, Ohio. And Sunday, March 4th at noon Eastern on ESPN2, the U.S. taking on France from Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey. Finally, Wednesday, March 7th, 7 Eastern on ESPN News, the U.S. facing England from Orlando, Florida. The final score from San Diego, once again, five to one. Goals from Alex Morgan, Crystal Dunn, two from Mallory Pugh, and the game winner for Julie Ertz, who just seconds ago found out that her husband, Zach, is indeed going to the Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles. How cool is that? What a great day for the Ertz family. Once again, the final score from San Diego, California. The United States 5, Denmark 1. Coming up next, here on ESPN, it's Marty Smith's America. For Julie Foudy and the rest of our crew, I'm Sebastian Salazar. Thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>